Hey there, Internet. On episode two of Project 2025, I want to talk a little bit about the hidden problem that might be causing your lathe rigidity issues. And so what we're going to focus on today is the lathe saddle. Now, this is a part that has all kinds of problems, but it will serve to demonstrate the point. And the hidden problem really has to do with the carriage retaining strips that are on most of these Chinese lathes. And these carriage re retaining strips bolt into these bolts and then they have gibs that are designed to stand off of the bottom surface of your bedways and that standoff is supposed to adjust how much it can move up and down. So why am I talking about this? Well, I recently just tuned up my other lathe and I, I, I was kind of surprised to see that as I fit this on here with the loose, uh, with, with these not correctly configured, they were fairly loose, when I would move the carriage, the whole thing would bind up basically. And so I was kind of confused about that and then as I tightened and as I tightened and as I reduced how much play there was up and down in this dimension, it started to run smoother and smoother and smoother. We've got an indicator on here now to, to kind of demonstrate what happens. Now, if I'm trying to do some parting on the lathe, basically the tool pressure is going to push back and it's going to create a twisting moment on this uh, carriage, okay? And if I put a twisting motion on this carriage, you can see what happens is the, uh, it rides up this prism, uh, and if it's, not, if, there's, if it's not held down tight against the prism, our chatter is gonna, be, is gonna be causing this to move up and down, and as this moves up and down, it's gonna be pushing the cutter into the work. <laughs> and you're gonna have a really tough time parting off on a small lathe like this if that, if that, uh, if that cutter is digging into the work every time you, you try to get a little bit of tool pressure on there. I just wanted to call this out because um, it's not obvious. You know, that, that strip is hiding under here and it's not something that you really put a lot of thought into. So the more that you can constrain that strip uh, to keep to, to basically prevent this thing from moving up, the more that this prism is going to help you uh, get rigidity into your lathe. What are some of the things that you can do to mitigate this? The first mitigation I would suggest is that the, the little grub screws that are in the, uh, you know, when you get your lathe, you're going to have these little grub screws that are supposed to stand this off of the bottom surface. They kind of act like, like basically like a, a, a rolling element, right? So if I put pressure on this, this front, I basically create a fulcrum and there's not a whole lot of ways to make this super rigid. It's going to act like a big spring. And if this is springing, you're going to get this rise and if you get the rise, you're going to have the chatter from, from your cutter. So then uh, have something that allows this to pivot what you need to do is you need to find the exact right shim and when you bolt that thing down there, um, it's not going to have anywhere near as much ability to rock. That would be the first thing that I would suggest. The second thing I would suggest is it's pretty easy to actually make tapered gibs and I've made tapered gibs for uh, this carriage and they work really great. You can find a video on how to make tapered gibs for this carriage retainer underneath here. I would say that that's a pretty good investment to improve the rigidity of your lathe. But there's one really important thing that you have to make sure that you're aware of, and that's the fact that you have to be able to measure and check that the distance between your, your prism and the bottom of your ways here is consistent. And if it's not consistent, it will limit the ability to uh, constrain this motion up and down, which will directly impact the ability of your lathe to uh, to do things like parting. So anyway, thanks for watching episode two of Project 2025. Leave a comment down below and I'll see you next time.